part of the attraction to the job for me was learning about baking. You know, I cook all the time. I enjoy cooking, but I didn't know a lot about baking. And uh, so that was part of the attraction for me to learn about baking. So I had absolutely no knowledge coming in. And I started washing dishes. You know, you just, that's how you learn. You start at the bottom, work your way up. So four years, it'll be four years this uh, November that I've been here. Over 100,000 loaves of bread baked. Uh, you know, we, we made a lot of mistakes. Uh, you know, we found out what works, what doesn't work, what's good, what's not good. The chocolate cinnamon rolls is our, it's, it's, it's basically one of our big sellers right now. It's taking off and it's a high demand. The chocolate rolls is just, we gotta make those every week, every day, no matter what. And the sourdough is really taking off on, on our new bake shop on Cherokee now, so. You know, I take a lot of pride in, you know, in our, in our bread. It's handmade, no preservatives, not mechanized, you know, that stuff doesn't have character. We are craftsmen here. We do it with these and a little salt and water and flour and make something really nice. And so I think that's the edge that we have over the mass produced stuff. You know, it's just blah, you know, to me, I don't know, I'm a little biased, just a little bit. Bridge Bread is a social enterprise. Uh, the objective is to create opportunity for people who were uh, homeless, living on the streets, to pull themselves up by the bootstraps. Initially, when I became homeless, I did not have a clue. You know, I was 58 years old, I'm 61 now. 58 years old, never thought I'd be homeless. Got divorced, and I'm homeless. Uh, I lost the house. I, was, I slept outside for about nine months, starting in February. It was a lot of scavenging around before I started Bridge Bread. I, I wasn't really, I didn't really have um, a home base, you know what I mean? And Bridge Bread became a home base for me, you know? And the family at that. Homelessness can have any type of costume. Homelessness can look like you, you know what I mean? Homeless can dress like you, smell like you. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have to know. You know what I mean? Not every homeless person is on the corner with a can in his hand asking for change, you know? Homeless can be an ex-doctor, an ex-lawyer, or a, a person who just got laid off at a, a, a warehouse and he has a family and they homeless now, you know? Homeless has no disguise. Of the money that we bring in from bread, from bread sales, about three quarters of that goes to compensation for the bakers and about one quarter goes to purchase the ingredients that made the bread. Um, our rent, utilities, insurance, and other overhead have been, to this point, paid for through donations. Um, as we grow with uh, scale, we actually generate greater margin and we think we will not need any of, uh, any of those donations uh, in, the, in the very near future. Does anybody have any advice to Terrence on how he should shop for groceries? It's been He's been wanting somebody to tell him how he should be shopping and making more of his own food. Mm. Where it's simple. Ha ha. That's a good way to eat, to, to, to buy Amen. food and, and, and eat it simple. I'm a business person, my wife's a business person, we wanted to do something with the business. And uh, we foundered about, thought about doing firewood bundles and gift bags and all sorts of things. And then she went away for the weekend and I'm the cook in my house and I had never made bread. Bread machines don't count, I had a bread machine. Um, I made a couple loaves of bread, they turned out okay. I went to sleep and in my dreams I had a dream that I was making bread with the guests at the homeless shelter and I took that as my inspiration. We went the very next week and made bread with the guests of the homeless shelter and that's been well over 100,000 loaves ago. We cast a vision at Lafayette Park that we are Christ's presence in the urban community and we hold ourselves accountable to it. I mean, People want to be in mission. People want to be doing purposeful things. So how do I tell some pastor to do that? I, I think it's maybe um, give yourself a break. Don't make yourself have to be the one who knows it all because we'll never know it all and we were never intended to know it all. That's why we're supposed to be a Christian community. Sometimes they'd ask my opinion on what I thought about things and other times they'd just let me know what they were doing. And it was really great because there's no way I would have ever known everything you need to know to start like a bridge bread. I believe that there is an inherent conflict between 
the attitude of minimizing risk, preserving assets, and uh, the uh, risk avoidance uh, strategies that people employ in nonprofits and churches, and uh, entrepreneurs' desire to seize opportunity and to take risks intentionally. I think it's inherent. You gotta say yes. If, if you say sort of a tepid, well maybe I'll kind of sort of give it a little bit of a try, you may not get to the point where you're getting the reward. It's gotta be a real yes. I know the stories of all the bakers, and I know how far they've come. And um, that's probably some of the richest gifts of being in ministry, is to see the transformation that has happened in them, and also the transformation that has happened in our church. Because our church is excited when hours go up and we get to hire another baker. Our church is excited when one of our bakers gets their home. Their church is excited when one of our bakers worships with us. I mean, it's just a blessing every which way around. I, I, I definitely has a, a, a first place, a first place spiritual level with God. You know, I have a, a front row seat with God, even though I'm not in church every Sunday, you know, just because how much I talk to him now. And I feel like that most problems are off my shoulder now. So it's easy, it's more easy for me to talk to God other than feeling like I'm ashamed to talk to God because of the sins that I did in my past. You know what I mean? When I started Bridge Bread, I instantly got into GED school and I would be done with GED school in January and I'll be graduating from that and I'll be starting um, Forest Park that coming season. Other people tried to lure me away, Panera Bread, you know, but uh, this is my home here, so I ain't going nowhere. I'll be here.